guys, welcome to episode 57 of the Jez and Friends podcast. Um, today is pretty much all about leadership and this guest epitomizes what it means to be a leader. Um, she's achieved so much such as college captain Nurad Gundic um, and I'm sure others will touch on. Ella, how's it going? Been a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm going really well, thank you. How are you? <laughs> yeah, not too bad. We spoke about like obviously sitting the gap today and you know being back. Um, what about yourself? Like how's that been online doing uni? Um, I definitely prefer being in person, <laughs> I can yeah. definitely say. Um, yeah, especially I'm doing a double degree. I'm doing um, science chemistry as one of my degrees. So I've missed out on countless numbers of labs and um, just watching someone do a, like a recording of a lab and then having to write about it is just not the same as like going in person and doing it. But, you know, I'm double vax now. So hopefully next oh, year awesome. it will be okay. But that's what we were saying in 2020 as well. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, fingers crossed, Ella. And we always like start with our hypotheticals, and it's a good segue because obviously, for me, exams are coming up. Um, and in terms of that approach, like, what would you do differently? Um, if you were to like, do your VC exams again. Oh, um, I probably set myself a more realistic schedule, because in my head I was like, I'm gonna do two or three practice exams per day, leading up to my exams, and I'm definitely gonna do that, and I'm not gonna give myself any break days I'm just going to set that pace and then like that was just a bit unrealistic <laughs> um, just thinking that I was going to all of a sudden get that motivation to do everything um, so definitely because like I think setting goals is important but if you set yourself yeah. unrealistic goals like you're just not going to meet them and then you're just going to get upset <laughs> um, so yeah definitely with your goals try and make sure they're realistic is probably the, the most important thing um, yeah that and just focusing on the basics as well because um, sometimes you just want to focus on the really hard stuff, but then like once you can get the basics down for like maths and science, especially just like then everything else is easy. Oh, easy. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome advice. I'll, I'll probably take that on. Um, just been doing like one exam a week leading up, but um, just trying to keep it consistent, I guess. So consistency. Yeah, is yeah. Critical. Thing. Making sure that like if you forget one time, then that's okay, but just don't forget twice in a row, and then, then you should be good. <laughs> Yeah, and um, obviously, you know, you're past um, high school now and, like, onto uni, but how about, like, let's discuss, like, the beginning, obviously, growing up in Sydney for, like, the majority of your childhood. So, like, obviously, COVID's a factor for both our cities right now, including Melbourne, but, like, what was your um, memories growing up in Sydney? Obviously, the Opera House of Venue, pretty cool place, I guess. <laughs> yeah, um... I got to be honest, when when my dad first said, oh, we might be moving to Melbourne, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, I don't mind. And then a week later, he said, okay, it's finalized. We're moving to Melbourne in a couple months. And I was just not having it. I really, really did not want to move. And um, I remember discussing with my dad, like I was like, so, because my grandparents lived, well, lived in Sydney. They moved um, to be uh, in Melbourne with us about a year after we moved. But I was discussing the logistics of me moving back when I was in year 12 or as soon as I graduated, I really wanted to move back to Sydney because I just did not want to be here at all. And then I lived here for about six months and I was like, wait, this is, this is kind of good. <laughs> and now I love Melbourne and um, Sydney is not as good as Melbourne, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, so sorry to people who live in Sydney. But um, I think it is a bit hard to compare them just because I lived in the suburbs of Sydney. And then mm. whereas I'm like almost, like, I'm just on the outskirts of the CBD here. So it's obviously like a much easier for me to get into the city and for me to go out now that I'm older as well, like when I was in Sydney, I was like 12, so I wasn't going any, out any, anywhere. <laughs> Where now that I'm in Melbourne, well, not now, obviously, because of lockdown, yeah. but it's been pretty easy for me to just go out into the city and hang out with my friends. Well, actually, I have been for picnics and stuff recently, but um, yeah, I uh, definitely like Melbourne a lot better. Just the vibe is <laughs> a lot nicer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I feel like, I don't know, for some reason, I feel like the CBD in Melbourne, um, is probably more, you know, um, just captures the attention a bit more than Sydney for some reason, even though I haven't lived yeah, in Sydney I get as long that. as you. I think uh, Sydney, when you go to the CBD in Sydney, it's um, very, like, businessy, whereas, like, I feel like the CBD in Melbourne is much more, like, like much less businessy. It's more <laughs> like people going out and re going, to going to restaurants and going to Melbourne Central and, like, shopping and stuff, whereas, like, you know, in Sydney it doesn't really feel like you're there to... <laughs> To party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's an awesome description, Ella. And um, 
we'll move on to like obviously speaking of the city you study at RMIT um, yeah. uni which is down Swanson Street where I work at KFC shout out to them but um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway give us a rundown on your course you're studying like um, more in depth like obviously a double degree I think that's four years and like how does it work because business and um, obviously chemistry are like two different facets in their own fields yeah um i'm someone who really likes to have a lot of um like a broad sort of range i like yeah. to cast my net wide <laughs> i think <laughs> I, when i'm doing the same thing for too long i get really really bored so that's why i picked a, a double degree because i was like well i really like chemistry i really like business and then i didn't really want to have to pick between the two so um and then i found rmit that had a double degree so i was like well, okay i guess that's where i'm going <laughs> and um they, they do both of the degrees really, really well. So most of my classes are, well, what I was meant to do is I was meant to have one business class in semester one and one in semester two. But then I ended up just doing both of them in semester one so I could load up on classes in the first North. semester. So I would have to take less <laughs> in the second semester. Um, which in hindsight, I don't know if I would have done that again because I, in my head I was like, oh, I'll get all of my classes out of the way and then just have less classes at the end of the year. But I think I should have like loaded down in the start so that I could mm. like get used to uni, but oh well. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> um, good. Yeah, but um, it's really good because um, you get to meet a lot of different people as well. Because I find that, especially for chemistry, like because the, the science department isn't that big at RMIT, like the, there's heaps of business classes, but not as many people like I think there's only three people who are doing the sa the exact same double degree as me so it's you know quite small <laughs> um so you kind of see the same people in all the science classes but then I get to meet other people in all the business classes as well so it's good <laughs> yeah I feel like there's too many people on the media chain like me but um <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah definitely yeah, yeah. <laughs> all good now do something you like though <laughs> yeah fair enough um, that's good advice as well yeah. but if, I wanted to if, touch yeah. on study load, Ella. So, like, how does that differ mm. compared to high school? Obviously, you spoke about, like, taking an extra, you know, subject for that semester. Mm. Yeah, well, it's it's interesting because I guess um, I'm not too sure how it usually works, um, but mm. in lockdown, what's the thing has been is that they pre-record lectures and then for most classes, you'll have, like, one one hour session or two hour session with the, with the tutor and then... Um, there can be like 20 people in that class or like 40 people in the class and then they just go over content and stuff and it's really different to having like three um three lessons a week which each go for like an hour and a half and then you have heaps of one and one time with the teacher and then you go home and do homework and then you come back and show them whereas like in uni it's a lot less individual they kind of just give you the work and then you kind of work it out and then i oh it wasn't like i wasn't prepared for how much i would have to go and like learn myself because <laughs> i thought yeah. i should that they would give me all the all the content and then I would just do like homework questions but that's, that's not what it's like <laughs> um, um yeah so it's, it's been an adjustment but I think um especially a lot at, at Mac they've really kind of helped you with that just from uh, a lot of the teachers that I had in VCE had a system where you would watch Ed Rollo videos like you'd watch the content at home like and then bucko. you would come into <laughs> class yeah yeah bucko yeah <laughs> and um, my physics teacher did that as well and um I, I never really got around that. I was like, oh, I mean, I enjoyed it, but I was like, why am I doing this? It doesn't really yeah. make that much sense. But then I got into uni, I was like, oh, wait, every single one of my classes is like <laughs> that. Maybe that's why he might have done it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think uh, definitely being, like getting, teaching yourself is something that I, I wasn't really ready for. Or like I took one of my classes, I actually have to drop one of my classes because I didn't read the instructions or the prerequisites properly for the class and I didn't know how to do some of the prerequisites that I was expected to know how to do so I had to drop it <laughs> so definitely if you're picking classes make sure you're qualified to take the class because yeah. if you're not then it's not good <laughs> it's very <laughs> stressful <laughs> um, yeah so I think I was trying to teach myself that at home and I was like watching Khan Academy every night like seriously no. writing stuff down like what the hell is happening um but yeah I wasn't I wasn't ready for that because I'm just so used to just being like I don't understand this teacher please explain but then you know when there's like 80 people in a class it's not really as feasible I mean people still help you and you can email your um like teachers and stuff but like it's very different <laughs> yeah it's awesome advice because like um obviously yeah it's it's kind of kind of balancing it out um sort of thing but also let's have a bit of fun um at RMIT because I know it's kind of like Mac how the club system works so 
I think you took up cheerleading and um, I think Eamon needs a few tips here but like you've obviously done pretty well with like some front flips and all that um, can you tell us how that that's sort of done is there like a technique you have to follow specifically because he just like goes oh. for it. <laughs> I did gymnastics from like age 5 to 12 so I kind of learned most of my oh, right, skills yeah. there <laughs> um, and then <laughs> I was kind of just relearning how to do them for the cheer team. Um, but um, make sure you jump up before you start spinning because a lot of the time, a lot of people are trying to learn. They just jump and then they go diagonally and just, or just even horizontally straight across and try to spin. But then like, you don't, you can't, you can't spin. You, like, they, Cause you're just going to go straight into the ground. So you got to make sure you jump up before you start spinning. That's the main trick. With the, I think <laughs> I'm not too sure. I kind of just do it. I think it's just, um, it's been really interesting because um, I've never done cheerleading before, but because I know how to do all the gymnastics tricks, I'm with, like, I'm in, I'm in uh, the one, like, the more experienced cheer one. But there are a lot of people that are learning how to do tricks for the first time, and then they'll be like, so do you have any tips? And I'm like, dude, I learned how to do this when I was eight. <laughs> this is just my <laughs> muscle memory kicking in. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's been really fun. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty fun. I might give that a go if I'm if at RMIT, but, um, yeah, we'll dude, see. You should actually join. It's so fun. <laughs> I've... I, I'm not even joking. Like, um, there's been a lot. Of, apparently, there's a lot of people that just go to the tryout days just because their friend is on a team and they just want to try out just to see what it's like. And then they just have joined and become a dedicated member because it's it's so fun. And I have lots of new friends on that as well, especially because in lockdown you haven't really been able to meet. Like a lot of my high school friends have don't, like have barely any uni friends because you're not you never go to uni. But um, yeah, it's been good true. to like have a club and then I got to know them from training and then now we have zoom calls and stuff so it's good <laughs> to actually have friends in uni <laughs> yeah no that's awesome sign me up for um 2023 but oh, um, yeah. yeah touching <laughs> on rmit again obviously i remember this because we got like set group assignments some um, this year but you probably know this um have you encountered as we all do any social loafing like obviously like there's particular people in groups that you know don't contribute as much um i'm sure oh. you know <laughs> yeah don't even, we're always don't the people start. that do the work you know yes yeah. um yeah it's it's been interesting <laughs> uh what what i do like which i never thought of as an actual um thing but it's apparently a thing is that i had one assignment this this semester i had five people in my group and then after we turned in our assignment we all got a survey and then we had to rate each of our group members right. and then uh it was anonymous thank god <laughs> and then um <laughs> And then basically what um, all your, and you had to rate yourself as well. And then, um, so let's just say that our group got um, an 80%, but then all my group members told me that I did a really good job. So then I will get higher than 80%. But then if I didn't do as well, if all my group members rated me low, then I would get lower than 80%. So it's still based on how much like on your actual work, but then whether or not like you're a good team member or not, you can get a higher mark than what your actual assignment got which is really good because it means people were actually contributing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I found that um, the science subject is not as much because um, actually, well, you do, but I think uh, in sort of the more humanities subjects is when you have big assignments that you work on for a while. So you really need to get all your groups contributing. And there was definitely some people that would not turn up to group meetings or they would come <laughs> for like 10 minutes and be like oh yeah we definitely need to get some work done anyway i'm gonna head out for lunch guys you keep going yeah, <laughs> yeah which was um not fun but you know have you have, have you experienced that i guess you don't do too much work um oh, with, like, in business, actually. Oh, um, oh yeah the, yeah, the final business assignment yeah. Yeah. <laughs> those people who did that. nothing just um i think Baco gave them a zero or kicked them out of a class so that's like full Ooh. yeah punishment mode yeah not you though you you, you carried the group yeah <laughs> oh yeah i tried to <laughs> good on you <laughs> ah cheers um and another good segue Ella. obviously um you're a former mac student and um obviously since arriving in year eight um with the new vertical learning structure i believe the first year so how did you find that like and um adjust to it because we're so used to that you know academic eight nine structure back in the day yeah um it's really interesting describing the school to people now because I'll, I'll like casually, I think even some people, um, I was mentioning this podcast and they're like, who is Jerry? And I was like, oh, well, he's like my <laughs> sister's friend, but we're also friends because everyone in my school was yeah. friends with everyone in the different year levels. But um, 
I went to a, like a, a normal school <laughs> um, in Sydney and then I moved here in year eight. So I think they'd been doing the um, vertical structure for, I think, like six months. And um, yeah, it was, I expected it to be way weirder than it, than it was going to be, than it actually ended up being. Cause I think you just don't notice. But I think when you're in um, like a norm, normal school, you just, you know, your own grade level, especially being, um, I went to the high school that pretty much everyone from my primary school went to my high school as well. So I already knew everyone and was like, okay, these people are my year, these people in the year above me, these people in the year above me of them. And um, whereas for Mac, you just don't even think about it anymore. And so I guess you just don't even realize it, right? I mean, you've had this, that sort of structure for your entire like school, high school basically. But did you yeah, notice that much of a difference from yeah. primary school? Like you start, you start to not realize, yeah? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. I guess it becomes more apparent in VC, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, I, I just like the choice as well. Like being able to pick like forensic science and that sort of stuff, like oh, that was so good. <laughs> I don't know if I would have actually ended up studying science if I hadn't gone to Mac, but I'm really glad I did. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And um, touching on like that, what were like some of your favorite memories at Mac, um, Ella? Ooh, um, hmm. Uh, I had a lot of really good year 12 memories, even though, um, you know, COVID. I wasn't yeah. at school all the time because of COVID. Um, definitely the year 12 common room, I think that brought us all closer together. And I've, I've heard Justin told me you guys won't have one next year, which is devastating. Yeah, for violating us um, a bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think just hanging out in the year 12 common room. I think um, I got my bangs cut before mentoring. Like I got a, got a fringe. Like I was just randomly talking about what if I what if I had a fringe and then someone was like yeah I could cut you one and I was like all right let's go so that was a fun <laughs> memory it was um I regretted it but like I didn't because it was funny <laughs> it was like a, <laughs> and it was good and um I actually um Alec cut my hair the other day um he works with me and then we had a closing shift and I really wanted my hair cut so he cut it for me like two days ago not two days ago like a week ago so I'm getting really into the getting friends to cut my hair <laughs> but um <laughs> yeah no just getting my hair cut and mac was fun and um i guess going to nurad as well i i would classify that as a mac memory even yeah, though 100%. it technically isn't <laughs> yeah just all the sort of like random like excursions and stuff that i went to at mac was all really good i feel like i was always just out of class just going to random things <laughs> Yeah, and obviously, um, as highlighted, Max a wonderful place um, for both of us, especially like opportunities with leadership. So um, mm. I was lucky enough to be like college captain with you in 2019 and learned so much from you, especially like with public speaking. So um, do you want to touch on maybe like obviously NURAD, but maybe a bit more on that college captain experience um, and how that was like for you? Yeah, I mean, I've always really liked to go for leadership positions i don't really know why <laughs> it's just fun <laughs> um i really like telling people what to do i guess i'll be like this should happen this should happen this should happen um so i guess um college captains are kind of the natural progression from that <laughs> um yeah uh i think learning how to talk to adults about things is probably like one of the yeah. biggest things that i learned there because um you went on the school council i think because um we had the previous years um, oh, yeah, captain yeah, was, on the council yeah. with me and then um just going to council meetings and sitting there and like hearing like adults talk about what we what they should want what they want and then being like oh okay motion pass like I was like what what is going on and I think it's a very I think prepare me for the workplace because um um mm. working in an office is very different to working at fast food because I, I have two part-time jobs um and just like hearing like adult people talk about like finance is just really weird and I, <laughs> I'm really glad that I was um college captain because I, I got to sit there and I, I I I didn't contribute as nearly as much as I should have because I was like intimidated <laughs> but um I think being able to be in that environment like l listening to how decisions get made because it's very different to hearing like people that your own age discuss pretty much anything just uh, there's a very different demeanor about it <laughs> so yeah but I think, like, being college captain also helped me because I'm sure you felt this as well, like, being able to actually speak up about things that you're, that you want, you know, yeah. like, um, basically being able to have a direct line to a teacher or principal and say, look, I really don't like this, it should change, and then 
when it actually does get changed, it's like, oh, wow, that's crazy. Like, if I want something, I can go get it. <laughs> and um, you, being able to, oh, my friends want something, like getting the year 12 common room, that was my 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 happiest moment. Like, <laughs> I really, really campaigned for that. And uh, I went in in the holidays and give, gave it a good clean. And I don't know, just like having little wins like that, being like, oh, damn. So if I really want something, then I can go get it. It's really I don't know, something that I probably learned from college captain. I'm sure you felt that a bit too, especially being someone that was so young getting college captain. Yeah, hundred percent. Like I love that vertical curriculum because like it offers so much. Because you were in year eleven, I was in year nine, and you know, generally um, those who get college captain are in year twelve. But like the notion mm-hmm. was completely, you know, um, s- switched around essentially. So it was good that our school um, their motto is just like that. So it kind of pushed us forwards, I guess, with leadership. Do people like believe you when you tell them that you're a college captain in year nine? No, some don't believe it at all. Yeah, they're like, like okay, good. Like, yeah. whole school or, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah good on you. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. And what about that public speaking aspect, Ella? Because I remember the assemblies, you were just, like, um, you know, pretty confident in what you were doing. um, And just, like, that persona was, you know, gratified by the way you spoke. Oh, I'm glad I'm glad it's, yeah, I came across that way. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think... um. When I, well, the way I think about public speaking is I think, oh, I'm pretty good at public speaking. I don't get that nervous. Um, it's fine. And then I get up there and I, I get, uh, I talk very, very, very fast. Like I already talk pretty fast in general, but um, as soon as I get in front of a crowd blah, 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 and people cannot tell what I'm saying. <laughs> um, actually, whenever I had classes um, where I had to give a speech, um, Kira would always sit in the front row and then she would go like this to tell me to slow down really? <laughs> because oh I would just speak God. really fast without, without me noticing that that probably saved me a couple marks just because whenever I saw her you see I'm talking fast again she would just be like this chill out <laughs> well once you stop up a couple times in front of people you're like okay what's the worst that's going to happen like like trying to like get into the mentality that r- no one really cares about how well I do speaking in front of the assembly mm. like no one really cares about it as much as I care about it so <laughs> you can just I just need to chill out <laughs> like um I think just realizing, oh, no, no, not everyone is thinking about you constantly. Like in two hours time, no one is going to think about the fact that you mumbled or stumbled over one word. Like no one really cares about that part from you. So like trying to get that mentality. I mean, obviously that's easier said than done, but trying to work that out. And, be, and once you suffer a couple of times, it's like, okay, well, what, what, what else could happen that is that bad? You know, <laughs> I've definitely had a couple fumbles with that, like dropping the microphone and saying random stuff into the microphone i messed up the welcome to country one time i didn't know how to print i never done the welcome to country and i didn't know how to pronounce uh wondery people so i was i was like uh uh, the the, the, yep and anyway we're gonna do the national anthem now and then i just walked back and that was really not good but um (laughs) i learned from that (laughs) yeah yeah the um part i hated for most at our assemblies were when the mic was like muted because you walk on the stage and then you start speaking and like literally nothing comes out that's the most embarrassing yeah um, or like and you don't know if you're just being crazy because like I feel, I feel like that's happened to me before and then I was like is this not working and then it actually was I just <laughs> couldn't hear it for some reason and then it's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah anyway um what about NURAD because obviously um Jacinta and I and a few others went to NURAD a few years ago but obviously you didn't go with us because you're a few years older but what was your experience yeah. like um any like fond memories you remember like bridge building maybe i remember um, social media. yeah oh man nurad was like that was one of the best experiences of my entire life that was just yeah i i can't even like describe <laughs> it's um yeah i think our group was not very um good <laughs> at uh building anything yes <laughs> so um we really we didn't I I don't think we technically passed the requirements for the bridge but I think we were there for ages and we were just really not doing a good job um so they were like oh no no you did it don't worry <laughs> and um our, I remember our raft um did you do the raft competition at the like that was like the last oh, one? Oh yeah did? we just like chucked yeah. like the um buckets whatever it's called like the big cans and then just put like some yeah yeah over it, literally <laughs> ours just completely <laughs> fell apart at the end and that was with the other team's help because we couldn't remember how to do any of the knots. So one of the, like two of the guys from the other team had to come over and do, tie all our knots for us because we couldn't remember how to do it. <laughs> so, but we had a good time though. But we were, because um, I guess the whole thing is about le- leadership and growth. <laughs> we were talking about how, 
you know, when, when we were building the bridge, we all got frustrated at each other because we couldn't build a bridge. But yeah. then by the time we were at the raft, we were all just having a good time. We're like, guys, none of us can build a raft, but that's okay. We're just going to have some fun. <laughs> so I guess that's character development. <laughs> then, um, yeah, Nurad, Nurad was so good. I mean, I think it's, it's funny now, like every year I get those, like one year ago, this happened. Yeah. And oh. that was um, coming on five years ago now, is, which is really weird to think about. Yeah, that's crazy. But um, do you still talk to people from Nirad? Yeah, every now and then, like um, snap a few people, you know, um, text them, see how they're going. So I'm sure you do that yeah, as well. That's good. Um, yeah. yeah that's good. Um, there's like a group of girls. Um, so Hania, who who you know, because she went to Mac, and then there's three other girls as well. And we like made it a thing last year on, on 2019, I think, to meet up once a month, and we go to like a new restaurant. Um, but it didn't get to happen last year and this year because of COVID. But um, like. You know, we still meet up once a month and we still text all the time and we go out in new places. And it's kind of weird because I forget that that's how I know them. So then I'll like mention Nurad one time and then I'm like, oh, it's this place. But I'm, oh, wait, no, that's how I know you. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like we've known each other nearly five years now, which is so weird to think about. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible, Ella. And um, obviously, um, when I was at Nurad, we had like a song that kind of defined our stay, which was Teenage Dirtbag. Um, what about you guys? <laughs> Did you have like a song that kind of defined your oh, stay at Nurad? definitely well we so i was at Nurad term one 2017 and in the you know how you get to go home like over that weekend, weekend that was yeah. when ed sheeran's album came out oh, so wow. and before right before Nurad was when shape of you and castle on the hill came out so oh. like they were the only songs that anyone listened to yeah. <laughs> and um one of the girls on the stay home weekend like i went home and i listened or not i didn't go home i you know i went and saw my family on visiting weekend and i listened to the album but i didn't save it anywhere but one of the girls had saved it to a year to be and then it got like dealt <laughs> between the entire um like camp where like everyone was like there was like one usb that had like the um the entire uh, ed sheeran album on it and like it got passed around to everyone so everyone could have oh, the album nice. on their on their laptop to listen to um so yeah definitely shape of you i cannot listen to that song and um not think about Nirad just because it's like obviously like it was like a massive song but like just because like it was that you know like tiny section of like my life when that that's when it was really popular like that's like the only thing that i can think about <laughs> but there was heaps of other songs which is that one song in particular just heaps of ed sheeran <laughs> No, that is amazing. I remember it was a very popular song and yeah, it's good to have a memory like that relating to the song. And just touching on um, Nurad again, who was your favourite teacher at Nurad? Just quickly. Ooh, um, oh, that's a tough one. I really liked, um, I really liked the chef. I can't remember his name, but he was really nice. <laughs> oh, I can't remember his name. I feel bad, but he was great. He would, um, was it he locked Bromley? me in the fr fridge one time, oh, but think. like, he was good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and he was, he was very, like, threatening, but in a good way. <laughs> he come out with it. He would come out with his knife if you said you oh, didn't wow. like his food. And he'd be like, oh, okay, oh, sorry. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And um, Mr. I think his name was Mr. Cassison. Um, he was, I think he he was the one who ran Nurad. So he wasn't oh, actually really? a teacher, but he would it. come. Yeah. yeah, but I think uh, I think it got changed, like Mr. Smith or something, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But yeah, he was um he was really good as well. <laughs> yeah, who was your favorite? Oh, Mr. Valpede. I'm sure you remember him. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah was, Mr. Valpede was, was my, my um he was my uh what's it called my group leader. What's oh, it? like the one A's and all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was good to yeah it was really good to go back to Nurad and it literally looked the exact same. And then uh, <laughs> I went and got saw all the teachers and I was afraid they weren't gonna remember me because um like you know it'd been two years and they see like 40 kids every 10 that weeks so true, i was like yeah. they probably don't remember me but he remembered me so i saw my photo on the wall so i was like oh thank god <laughs> can we briefly touch on like obviously you've got family in canada canada but how is that like because mm. it's a pretty underrated place um because people just talk about the us uk more but people speak english yeah. in canada as well and pretty sick place so give us your thoughts on canada well i i love canada so much like um I've been uh, three times. Um, so I went like when I'm, so my family has a family reunion there every five years. Um, but I went there in 2005 and then we didn't go to the one in 2010, but then I went again in 2015. 
and then I went by myself in 2018, which was so cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I have so much family there. Like one, one of my uncles lives in um, the Yukon, which is, you know, very, very remote. I think there's 40,000 people that lived in his city um, or something like that. And um, I got to go visit him and I just went on like this one week long hike and canoe trip, which is really cool. And um, it's just such a pretty country because I think um, uh, I, I'm in Australia, you see a lot of nature, but you forget that like nature or like the bush looks different <laughs> in other countries. So I was like, okay, I'm going on a hike, big deal. But then I was walking through these like amazing forests, which people in like in, the, in North America probably don't even think twice about. But I was like, oh my God, look at this tree. Oh my God, it's a raccoon. I, I was in um, Vancouver, which is one of the biggest oh, cities there, which had yeah. big Melbourne vibes. And um, I was in the park and I saw a raccoon and I was like taking photos of it. And then the people <laughs> were like, what? Like, this is literally a raccoon. I was like, guys, you don't understand. <laughs> it's so cool. And it was like sitting in the trash, just eating oh, food. And I, I, was, I thought it was amazing. And um, no one else was nearly as impressed as I was. <laughs> but um, yeah, I love Canada so much. I would really, really love to live there sometime just because hopefully i'll be able to get some like dual citizenship or something because my grandpa's canadian and um yeah i just, it's such a cool place and i it's have very like there's a lot of cities there that are very similar to australian cities just like in the vibes you know <laughs> like similar weather in summer at least and um like the summer weather there was kind of like autumn weather here <laughs> and um like there was trams and stuff in vancouver and just such a pretty place <laughs> I'm obsessed with it. Yeah, that is awesome. And how close were you from Niagara Falls? Because I'd love to go there sometime. I think it's oh, in, in the um, border maybe? Or I think so. I, I don't think I was close to Niagara Falls. Yeah. <laughs> I did not go, actually. Um, I think the, the great thing about, like, um, Canada is there's, like, a million waterfalls everywhere um, because there's so many, at least where I was, there was heaps of glaciers. So you would see heaps of glaciers and then heaps of waterfalls coming from them. And so I feel like you don't really see waterfalls here in Australia, like unless you go to like Dardaways or something, where it's like a really specific spot. Like there's just heaps of waterfalls everywhere. But um, I, I should go to Ni Niagara Falls next time I visit there. I think I don't have family that, actually, I probably have family there. I have a, real, I have a lot of family in Canada, but <laughs> I don't have any really, really close family that live near there. But that should definitely be on my bucket list because there's heaps of really pretty places. But like if you literally just go anywhere in Canada, like there's going to be wildlife there and um, it'll be cool. <laughs> So I guess I need to chuck Vancouver on the list, Alice, because it seems like yeah. yeah, it's pretty much like Melbourne, but snowy maybe or dreamy. Yeah, or, yeah. <laughs> or like or go to the, the Yukon as well is basically like Yukon. just yeah. all um, all wildlife there. Like no one lives there basically. It's like Australia, but um, like the middle of Australia, but like luscious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, really great. Yeah. Um, and let's go back to Mac quickly. Um, mm -hmm. I guess entrepreneurship, you obviously ran your own catering business um, for special events at Mac, but um, talk us through the experience and what was that like? Because obviously there's processes behind that, like getting approval, um, you know, getting uh, like recipes down pat, um, like stock lists, all that. So maybe talk us through that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that kind of happened by accident. Um, <laughs> I took one <laughs> of the cooking classes for fun. And then we had to cater. Yeah. Yeah. Master chef. Oh, I love that class. And then, um, the teacher was like, okay, we need a bunch of people to cater for, um, this event. And then I was like, okay, I'll do it. And then they're like, you're kind of good at this. Maybe you should like start a business. And I was like, okay. Um, and I did, um, which was, I mean, it's a lot easier to start a business with school support than it is to just like randomly start a business. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, it was really good. Um, it was, you know, my, my side hustle. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I think I, I'm definitely not like an excellent cook. So it was kind of weird that I started the cooking business out of anything, but I think it was more about the business side that I was really like interested in, which obviously, you know, because I'm studying business now, obviously led to something. <laughs> um, yeah, I was, it's very interesting to like hire students and, um, at that time, I think I, I was paying them more than I was getting paid for my part-time job because the school made me pay everyone $16 an hour and I was getting like $10 an hour or something. And I was like, damn, I'm really just paying my employees <laughs> more than I'm getting paid. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, definitely like, I think there's been a couple student businesses now, right, at Mac? Is that still a oh, thing? I 
think it's kind of dried down a bit. But... Oh, it's dried down. Yeah. I mean, maybe there, there was a bit of a boom when I grew up. I, I was just a trendsetter, I guess. Yeah, you, yeah trendsetter. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you should definitely get into it. If that, I mean, I, I guess you're in VC now, so that's probably... And I'd, if you don't have a business passion, then I guess that's not something you're going to do. But yeah. Um, yeah, definitely it was a really good way to see like I don't know, in my head like a business was like oh you get things then you sell things that's like that's and you get money that's how that's how it is but um I don't know, like having to save all the like the invoice sheets and then talk to all the office ladies and then counting the float and stuff was interesting yeah definitely <laughs> if i if i didn't take that class if i didn't if i didn't take that master chef class then i wouldn't have started the business and then i probably wouldn't have ended up picking um business as a phase two subject and then i wouldn't have picked this as a as a course to study so i guess it really changed my life <laughs> no that's amazing Ella. it's funny how like one thing leads to another than another so um it's yeah, always good it's to like because like, your vc you try like different things probably similar to like me in terms of subjects i know i gave food studies a go vc and um you know because i'm not the best cook so just like improving the <laughs> skills here and there and um yeah it's just good to mix it around because I feel like I know a fair few people who just like stick to what they're good at, but I feel like if you yeah. try and improve your weaknesses as well, um, you're more prone to like finding other avenues, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm so glad that I just randomly decided to take cooking classes. I think it was for me as well. Like I never cooked, and then I was like, "Well, it seems fun. I'll try it." And then, um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't have not have guessed that it would lead me to what I'm doing now. But I'm very glad that I did. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And the business idea, I might have to give this a go next year, but I've got this motivation project idea, of trying to get like Maz, um, Bilha and um, Sol into it, but we'll see how that goes. Um, if there's four people, okay. it might be easier, but we'll see how we go. What are you trying to do for it? So it'll probably be like a, maybe a journal or, or something, but like, um, yeah, it'll probably take a bit of work, but I guess we've got you know summer holidays coming up and that's a good segue yeah. to yeah get some stuff sorted yeah definitely very good for your resume <laughs> if you're applying to any places or like not even jobs but any sort of like programs or like stuff like NURAD then they love to see that sort of stuff on them <laughs> like yeah. outside of school like endeavors <laughs> yeah yeah um I'd love to give maybe a gap year ago but we'll have to see with COVID yeah. so yeah so I a gap year to like travel yeah travel Oh, cool. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be fine by then. If you're back. <laughs> well, I don't know. The va- the numbers oh, have no. not been going down even though we've been vaccinated, but we'll see how that works out. out. It'll be yeah. 2023 will be your gap year. So hopefully it'll be fine by then. I think 2024, then they said the world will be normal, I think, something like that. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. But then again, I could like um, do a similar thing to you. Like if you're doing a degree like your holidays are pretty long aren't they longer than yeah. two weeks down in, in high school i guess yeah well you you get like one you it's instead of being broken up into four terms it's two semesters and then you have a week break like um in like in the semester like a mid-semester break that goes for one week and then in between the semesters if you don't have any holiday homework because all your classes go for one semester only oh, that's crazy cool having yeah. a holiday where I didn't have to do any homework. <laughs> um, yeah, and then it goes for like a month and a half or something like that. And then I think my uh, examination period ends on like the 12th of November and then I don't have classes to start up and get until like March. So I got a long time. Yeah, yeah so months, oh, maybe the end of February, something like that. It's, um, yeah, so I'm just going to be working here probably. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah, but the one thing that I actually did not expect from uni to from high school to uni was in high school like whenever you take like holidays they're always like oh um you know have a good holiday but make sure you do heaps of work make sure you keep studying but then in uni every time like whenever I was taking my mid-semester breaks they were like guys make sure you don't work too hard because you gotta take a week off you know have a chill like don't do too much work and I'm like what is going on like if anything (laughs) you'd think it'd be the opposite but yeah and I, I took their advice. I t- took a big chill. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, it's well, weird. Well, um, I guess high school is more about quantity than quality in year 11 and 12. But I guess uni, it's more probably quality over quantity, I guess. so. Yeah, at least seems that way, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's very interesting. And 
I know we haven't touched on this a lot, but the podcast is about sports and um, mm. I guess you played soccer for a few years for Flemington. So, like, what position did you play and um, what was it like playing soccer on a, you know, against people who, you know, some play rep, some just play casually? Yeah. Um, well, I started playing soccer in Sydney and, um, well, I was actually, I did a lot of gymnastics and then one of my friends from gymnastics who went to a different school wanted to start playing soccer and then I wanted to start playing soccer as well but there wasn't any girls team for the Penny Hills football club which was like the big one that everyone was at so we started the girls team there was only one other girls team at the time which was like the all ages and then at like 11 you don't really want to be on an all ages team <laughs> for soccer <laughs> so we started the girls team like I like I co-opted a bunch of my friends to do it and we were terrible I think we scored two goals the entire season or something like that (laughs) um yeah it was not great because none of us had ever played soccer before um but it was really fun and then from that I kept going with um uh in for Kensington girls I played for them until I was too old to play (laughs) because it was like it's a a junior club um yeah I, I played um left wing or left defense even though I'm like right footed but um, in my other, my old team, we only had one girl that um, was um, used her left foot as a dominant foot, so I was always just on the left because I was like, oh, I don't care. So, <laughs> which which is good because now yeah, I yeah. feel like I'm like pretty good with both feet because you know when you're on the left, you obviously need to use your left foot a bit more. Yeah, um, yeah. I think um, I definitely played soccer more as like a social thing and a oh I I need to stay fit thing rather than a <laughs> oh I love soccer so much <laughs> but um. Yeah, it's good to be able to, you know, kick around a ball. Yeah, I, I was doing it the other day, you know, just in the park with my family. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're much more into sport than I am doing <laughs> me and everything. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah I, uh, I, I do really enjoy soccer, but um, it's something I should probably pick up again. But um, I've gotten a lot more into cheerleading, which is a real sport. I will tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> really hard. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's probably my more. Uh, more of my sport focus now at the moment (laughs) but um yeah obviously no sport at the moment because of um covid though but i think our our outdoor sports are starting again soon yeah end of october yeah so i'll be good i'm sure you're looking forward to that (laughs) oh yeah i definitely am for running so we'll see um, where that goes but a motivation for you um ella would be have you heard of uni games by any chance oh i was gonna go to uni games i was going to i was so and then it got cancelled. I was so sad. What was that um, for? Like cheerleading? For cheerleading, yeah. Really? Yeah, the whole team was going to fly up and uh, we were going to compete. And we had the whole, like, we had all the dates and I was getting so pumped. And, um, and then it got cancelled and I was so upset. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been really upsetting because, like, cheerleading and stuff like dance and gymnastics and all those sort of sports it's different to like soccer because like for soccer you like train once or twice a week and then you play once a week um generally during the season but with cheerleading like you just train heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps and then at competitions you perform so you really only like um uh, like play the sport um like competitively like a couple times in the year and every single time it's been like we've been training and then the competition has been in a week or two and then a lockdown and then we're like that's fine we've got the next one so we keep training (laughs) and then right before the next one it's a lockdown and it's just really frustrating. So we haven't been able to compete at all. But I mean, it's still really fun anyway. But it's kind of like when you worked really hard on like a routine and you're like perfecting it and you, you've got all your skills and you're hitting everything and then you just like never get to show anyone. It's like, oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's a good motivation because it's um, at the Gold Coast, I'm pretty sure. Maybe in a few yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good that's motivation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I had a bunch of friends going as well because um, one of my friends is on the fencing team, um, which is kind of crazy. Like, um, and she's on the Australian fencing team as well. Oh, really? Um, That's yeah, um, she's really good. <laughs> and, yeah, um, uh, yeah, she was going to go there as well. So we were going to have you know heaps of fun, and then there was other people who did like badminton and stuff, and like we were all going to have a whole party in on the Gold Coast, <laughs> but uh, the things just don't work out. But at least I'm only in my first year of my degree, like, you know, the next couple of years, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> fingers crossed. I won't be graduating until, like, 2024, so hopefully by then I'll be able to, you know, go once. <laughs> Obviously, funny stories, as you know, Ella. I'm sure you've got mm. a few lined up, but I guess either from your schooling days, you know, um, 
and just like uni you want to share to the listeners yeah um oh well, i really wish i had more funny stories from uni but just i haven't been able to go in more like so i was just yeah. thinking like just lockdown just has been um just like my, my younger brother zach has um autism as you probably know and he um he usually goes out he's been able to go out for school now um because disabled oh, schools good. are able yeah. to go out but he's uh, just been having a ball of a time at home but he's getting very restless <laughs> so we have this like cat door so we're renting our house and the previous owners had a cat and um they had a cat door and then zach tried to crawl through it and um he got stuck because i think he started going head first or legs first but then it wasn't working so he started to put his head in and he just got stuck in there and it was probably about 10 minutes that he was just sitting in there and then like we were like where is zach and he was like yelling and we're like what is going on and we saw him in there we're like oh we had to get the wrench out and um the door was just like not budging and we had to like yeah thankfully he was okay but it was really funny <laughs> yeah um, yeah it's um i feel kind of bad laughing at him sometimes because he was he looked really worried like he got really scared but it was kind of like dude if you're gonna get stuck in a in a castle <laughs> you can't expect me to not laugh because it's yeah <laughs> but yeah yeah definitely i think mac has some some good times as well though yeah just i think in the u12 common room just all sorts of shenanigans <laughs> i think because um <laughs> uh because you can't um the room is kind of bent so you can't really see from uh like when you're walking through the hall which the teachers were really worried about they were like oh but you guys could get up to things in the common room and we wouldn't know and then i was like we wouldn't do that and then i'm gonna be defaming the year 12s from last year a bit but we did get up to stuff I, we had like the, we had a couch there and it basically became like the phone couch because like you couldn't see <laughs> it when you walk through so everyone would just sit oh, along the that. couch on their yeah. phones and um yeah <laughs> but um yeah and it was good to have we would sneak all the year 11s in there as well and play like board games and stuff and then um that were you know bucko was not having it <laughs> he was like guys you can't be in there so we would start putting we would start getting the year 11s to put on our jackets our year 12 jackets so that when they would walk past they would just see the year 12 jackets so they wouldn't think that any year 11s were in there because like they stand out so much with the yeah with like normal jackets so that's a bit of a life hack for you I mean, not that you'll have the common room anyway, <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, to sneak everyone in there, just dress them up as the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I might campaign next year, just like you did. So um, yeah. we'll see where that goes. Um, yeah, cause it's getting pretty overcrowded now. I mean, it's all, all the boils, I guess. So yeah, pretty... there's just no space for the common room. Is that right? Or... Yeah, I think our last resort is either the resource <laughs> center with no privacy or um the master chef room so yeah oh okay right next to the kitchen i bet that'll be taken yeah that room. one yeah <laughs> so i don't know maybe that, that incentive of food maybe but yeah, yeah it's not looking good. i think it's it's a bit different though for us because we had like i think like less than 40 people in the grade whereas you guys have how many like 100 or so, 100 and something in um yeah, in your much. grade i think that's that's a kind of, that's a lot to fit in one room yeah, that's yeah, especially the especially the monster chef room. You guys all be like in the corner, be like, "Wow, isn't it so great? We have to we can hang out." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll just have to see where that takes us. Um, Ella, hopefully, like we find somewhere. But enough said about that. Um, we always get like a good response off this question, but mm -hmm. essentially, like, what's the best piece of advice someone has ever given you? It could be like academics wise, or just like life in general. Oh, um, oh, that's a really good one. One of my teachers, Miss Klassen, gave me. Um, You're was, not related, by the way. Yeah, not related, yeah. not related at all. But well, actually, we have a. She's from. She's from oh, the part true. of Canada that my grandpa's yeah. from. But we realized that we weren't actually related, because um, her grandpa was like my great uncle's. They had the same name, but they weren't the same person, which is a bit unfortunate. But um, she, um, she told me that because she was kind of a mentor for me with um, the business. Like she was kind of um, the person who helped me start it and then was always in the kitchen there with me helping out and then would always give me advice and that. And she told me when she left, she was like, oh, make sure that like when you find something that, that you enjoy, like make sure that you actually do it because I think yeah. a lot of the time, like you kind of find something you enjoy, but then you just don't stick to it. And then she's like, if you actually um, 
find something you enjoy, actually stick to it and then decide what you like in that. And then just become like, you know, just get really good at that. Don't let anything that you really enjoy slip away just because I think you can, you can definitely be the best at something that you enjoy. Cause if you just kind of just a natural talent at something, but you don't really care about it, like you're not going to go any further, but if you find something that you enjoy, then like when you build skills around that, like if you, it's actually exciting for you. <laughs> so I think I always used to go for like the easiest option, but then I just started going for the option that I like the most because then it's the easiest to actually do, if that makes sense, which I've kind of carried with me for all VC and in uh, uni as well. Like for a lot of the assignments, I've been able to pick what topic I want to do my assignment on. So I've decided picking the thing that sounds the most interesting to me, which sounds like the most straightforward advice. But then sometimes when you get that advice, you're like, oh, wait, what if I actually did that? And then it works out so much better. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. 100%, Ella. I can relate to that in terms of like, Obviously, I play a fair few sports, but I, I think back in the day, it was more like, mm-hmm. you know, just picking one sport, then going to another, but like more so now, like I just focus on the one thing, like I feel like um, I find interesting, which is running at the moment, um, and then like yeah. putting your effort into that, which is like, you know, I guess more time equals more results, so yeah. Yeah, you don't want to spread yourself too thin, which was kind of the opposite of what I was saying before, but don't put all your eggs in one basket. But true, like, true. Finding the balance between those two is like definitely like an art that you should probably master. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is why I'm taking up footy next year. So got to have that oh, balance, excellent. you know, also, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two different sports. <laughs> excellent. Yeah. And I know you read a fair few books. Um, your bookshelf's filled up. Um, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Um, and watch a fair few TV shows and movies. So, any recommendations? Um, obviously we're all in lockdown. Um, you want to give to the listeners? Oh, oh, that's a good one. I actually haven't been watching too many TV shows recently. Um, because I've been trialing this uh strategy in which I watch one episode of a TV show a day, but like only after I finish my like a lot of amount of tasks. Yeah. So all the TV shows that I've been watching have been like all the like most hyped ones. So like. I started watching Squid Game the other day, which was, I mean, really good. I don't know if you've seen it, but yeah, been very, very hyped. Um, And I watched the uh, most recent season of Sex Education, which was amazing. I had, I heard that it wasn't as good, but I really enjoyed it anyway. Um, Yeah, I've been doing a lot of reading as well. Um, As you can probably tell from my bookshelf, I've done a lot of reading this year. I think I had a thing where I kept buying books but not reading them so I became my mission of this year is to finish all the books before I move out which I want to do at the start of next year and I think I have something like 20 something to go but I've read like nearly 40 books this year so hopefully I'll be if I keep up that pace I'll be able to get it (laughs) um yeah I read one book called um Atomic Habits and one book called Emotional Female and then Atomic Habits is basically like talking about how the importance of like making small skills and then you know focusing on like tiny little ways that you can make yourself better and to make you know rather than focusing on the big things and which kind of sounds self-explanatory like oh you know just be like be a little bit better and then you'll get we'll get better but when sometimes i find that when i actually like sit down and someone tells me exactly what to do like you know it actually like actually really helped with um i think pretty much everything in my life just going from you know from studying to hanging out with friends and stuff like that really helped me build more better habits to become better (laughs) definitely recommend that book and a book called emotional female as well which i really really enjoyed um it's basically about the it's a it's a memoir by this australian doctor who is basically talking about the sexism and the racism in the field in the medical field and how much doctors are overworked and um it was really a big insight because i didn't really know how the medical field worked at all like i just thought that you just went to medical school and then you became a doctor but there's like a whole lot of things (laughs) you need to do and um especially like how hard it is for people um like women um and people of color and especially women of color and um just like a really really big like deep insight that i just never like thought about at all but it was really really interesting to see that and she really advocates for like the mental health of doctors and of everyone so it was really like uh, just reading about people's lives was really like really really interesting (laughs) even though that's not something i want to (laughs) do but yeah yeah that's my they're my recommendations (laughs) Yeah, the self-help um, motivation books are certainly something I read. Like a good recommendation for you would be probably yeah. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I know um, like it gives mm. you some good tips and um, probably The Resilience Project, Gratitude, Empathy, Mindfulness. I'm um, not sure if you've heard of the stuff they do, but um, they've got like some really good strategies. And, yeah. 
I think I, I think they did a TED talk or something like that. I think, I think it sounds like something I've uh, I've listened to before, but I'll definitely give it a read. Yeah, I, I've I've been getting a bit into. I think lockdown has really put me in like that self help. Yeah, <laughs> same, same. But it's um, it's been interesting to like because I think some of them are really good, but then other ones I'm reading and I'm just like, mm, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> but yeah, definitely Atomic Habits definitely very good. So I'll definitely give yeah, it a okay, once a read. Yeah. Yeah, but forty books, Ella. Like you're obviously doing uni and other stuff, but that's a good motivator for me because I've read eleven books so far this year, and I. I've, that's pretty good. Yeah, I feel like that's pretty yeah. good. But forty books is next level, so <laughs> I guess I'll try and you know maybe read forty books next year. But um, slowly. Yeah. Bit. Oh, in year twelve, I think I read something like seven books, and most of them were like ones for school. <laughs> I mean, for um <laughs> like English. <laughs> so, oh, but no, yeah. yeah. Um, I have this app that like tracks my reading and then I basically like log in. It's basically like Goodreads if, if you have, if you have oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right, and then you basically that, log. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you like log what you read, but then it gives you like graphs like based on what you read. So it gives you like a graph, like how many books you read over time, um, what genres you usually read, um, what like moods you usually read. And it's just because I, I really love data. <laughs> which yeah. is, um, I just like I love a good visual representation of like data about myself um like I always like graph all my like SAC results and everything like I, I'm just obsessed with it so I'll, I'll yeah, send so, you a link yeah. but Study um yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man okay God, I spent too much time on that that's my tip don't spend too much time on study scores calculator because yeah you'll drive yourself crazy <laughs> yeah. um but yeah definitely just having a data to look at myself and then every time I like finish reading a book it like adds to my little like collection and it shows me like how my data has changed and I'm just like oh oh my gosh um, this makes me happy I love, I love some good data <laughs> no that's awesome I have the website but I haven't logged anything so I'll make sure I do that um very mm. soon because I find um other people find it useful like you so might as well give it a go too yeah it's always it's good to find new stuff and look at reviews as well because sometimes I'll read a synopsis for a book and I'm like that's so cool and then I like read the bunch of reviews and people are like this is a terrible book and I'm like okay maybe maybe I won't <laughs> yeah <laughs> awesome so I've got a few more for you Ella which is um mm -hmm. now called quick hands so five quick questions Ella pineapple and pizza yes or no I don't love it but I don't mind <laughs> <I've never laughs> problems. I'm not gonna fight anyone about it but I, I used to really like Hawaiian pizza though that's not a really quick answer, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, English or maths? Oh, um, English, but not to study, just in general, because I like reading, but it gets too much to have to study a book. <laughs> Favourite book of all time? Oh, um, probably the Percy Jackson series. That's not one oh, book, yeah. but yeah, I love Percy. <laughs> Those were just yeah, amazing, yeah. There it is, just there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. um, where's your favourite place to visit in Melbourne? Ooh, um, I really like the um, the gardens in um, near the uh, the botanical gardens. They're just yeah, really pretty. Beautiful, yeah. <laughs> and the fountain there is awesome. <laughs> and also, are you a morning or night person, Ella? I think I'm a bit of both. I have a terrible sleeping schedule. Like sometimes I'll be up like I was up really really late the other night because I couldn't sleep I was up until like three or four but then the other like a couple of days before that I went to bed really early and I woke up at 4 a.m and got a bunch of stuff done so it's really not a very healthy thing but, <laughs> but uh, I guess it really depends on the activity <laughs> but I guess I'm a bit of both <laughs> yeah so ask me like one specific way at the moment I think I'm a night person but like next week I might be a morning person again so we'll see <laughs> Yeah, that is awesome. I think I'm in a similar, but I try to mix it up. Like during lockdown, I think we're like in hard lockdown because of that case. But um, I was giving mm. like five a.m. wake ups to go for a week. I mean, it worked, mm. but it kind of didn't at like some stages. So yeah, it's good to try and yeah. Yeah, I think in lockdown I've been mostly sleeping in, especially because like last year I would have to wake up early for school, but then in lockdown like you can just like open your laptop at 8 59 and hop into your first class <laughs> so like you don't have to worry as much but yeah <laughs> lockdown is just messed up with just my entire body clock i don't i don't care what especially in daylight savings now as well like my body doesn't care what time it is it it's just it's just going on vibes <laughs> no that's fair um i guess yeah even me it would take a few weeks to get used to the daylight savings but 
Um, I guess, mm. you know, speaking of the gap, we did something about time, which Jacinta will probably touch on, but we had to, like, write about everything yeah. about time. So, I guess, yeah, about time. Um, two years ago, we had this school production, um, and mm. myself and a few others had this ensemble role where we just, like, held, the, like, the pig mask and everything for Animal Farm, and that was pretty fun, just, you know, playing around. But, obviously, you had, like, a supporting role compared to... Um, myself so what was that like and um, the amount of hours we actually had to put into that production was quite extraordinary oh. yeah yeah um, I guess you don't really you don't think about how long it or how much effort it takes to like put on a production until you're actually in one I guess like because you don't think a lot further than like the actors and then but then you have to think about oh, all the backs behind the stage people all the people who are creating costumes all the music and stuff I really enjoyed it uh, I guess like learning lines was definitely something that I did not do as diligently as I probably should have. I'm really glad I didn't have as big as a role because, and I think a lot of my lines are very similar because I was, um, I think I still have the, I have the head uh, up there. Oh. From, I was a donkey. <laughs> yeah, I just have it. I, I didn't know what to do with it. I got to keep it and I was like, well, I'm not going to throw it out, but I don't need this, but just hanging on my closet. <laughs> uh, because I was like the old guy, I had a lot of my lines were just the same. I think the whole thing, and because it was Animal Farm, I was I was the, the donkey and like my like metaphor was that I was like the person who could see everything happening, but like couldn't do anything about it or something like that. So like all of my lines were just like, oh, the pigs are bad. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and it was, I, I tried to practice with Jacinta, but we had literally no scenes together. So we couldn't learn our lines together <laughs> but um yeah it was really really fun and um, definitely like a really great experience to get to know everyone because um yeah I think I met a lot of friends especially when I did the production when I was in year nine which I don't yeah you weren't in because I, I think oh, yeah, they weren't in the year sevens apart yeah. from Tom oh, yeah. um yeah <laughs> um yeah but then it was like interesting to see all the younger people because there was only one other year 12 in there with me so um it was good to see like me all the younger people who were in the um, play as well. Oh no, sorry, two two people in year twelve. But oh no, three. Never mind. I'm <laughs> getting everything. It's been ages. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was really fun anyway. Just meeting new people who are, who all like the same things. You know, all like theatre. I feel like um Stevie definitely convinced a fair few of us in like drama to give out a go. So no, yeah. it was an awesome experience. And I guess you'd probably say the same. Like we actually learned a fair bit of, like about um I guess stage play and I guess how that works because it's like sticky tape all over the um set and everything so yeah it's just yeah and probably like that that's probably what would help with your public speaking then as well because <laughs> i guess <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah credit to stevie um and just quickly obviously we had jacinta mm. on the pod i think she actually this time just walked into year. the room just oh, really? then, trying to be silent <laughs> yeah that's what, that's why i kept looking over because i heard the door squeaking and um yep <laughs> awesome um so i think we touched on this bit. You got into the horror movie, it, even though you're not yeah, a fan yeah. of horror. So, how would you kind of, um, I guess, talk us through that? Like, how did that eventually? Um, well, it was Halloween and we weren't doing anything. So, I was like, well, I feel like we have to. I was like, listen to, we're grown ups now. We have to watch <laughs> scary movies. Um, yeah. And I, I'd, I'd already seen the movie. I actually went to go see it with a bunch of people when it came out, but it was Before a 15 COVID. plus movie. Yeah. Yeah, before before COVID, <laughs> um, it was a fifteen plus movie, but I was only fourteen and like ten months or something. So, you do I we just called my mom and she came and watched the movie with us. Oh right, <laughs> which was just such a weird decision in hindsight. But we were like, okay, well we're already here. What are we gonna do? So then we all went out for lunch with my mom, and then we all went and watched the movie, and um, we all were terrified. My mom especially, because she really doesn't like horror movies as well. So she's a legend yeah. for doing that. <laughs> and then um, now I'm 18, so I can go see any movie that I like. And I don't have to, I don't have to bring my mom if I don't, if I don't <laughs> want to. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I was just like, just we need to watch a movie. And because it is like, it's a scary movie, but it's not one of those like haunting ones that's going to have you thinking about it for like the next, you know, five years. And it's also like pretty funny. So like when it's not scary, you're like laughing. So I was like, we can do this. And she really didn't enjoy it, but I enjoyed it because I got to watch her suffer. So it was kind of, <laughs> it was nice. <laughs> no, it's pretty funny. Um, yeah, I'd love to see a horror movie um, at cinemas. Cause like, it's kind of like a challenge, you know, like obviously we're not fans mm -hmm. of horror, but like sitting through that is kind of like, you know, conquering a fear in some ways. 
Yeah, it's it's very different to watching it. I mean, I, I would never watch a horror movie by myself. That's just too scary. Yeah, but like no, just from like watching it with one person is very different to like watching it in a cinema because like everyone's kind of like sitting by themselves, but they're like having the shared experience of watching the the movie. And um, yeah, de- definitely would be very different. But I'm a bit too scared to do that. I mean, you know, I feel like we've mentioned can't do it because of COVID anymore. Anyway, like a million times. Yeah. But <laughs> I can't do it anymore because of COVID. Um, I think just being in a cinema like popcorn and like chock top is just like i miss that (laughs) yeah i got to go see the the black widow movie like in well just the cinemas were open for like a couple weeks yeah i saw space jam so it was like yeah it's pretty similar yeah that was really nice yeah then hopefully i'll be able to watch shang chi once um yeah everyone wants to see that so um people are saying it's like one of the top five mile movies ever so i'm really excited to watch yeah that's a (laughs) very big call but um i know (laughs) that that, that, like includes the avengers so must be very good (laughs) to wrap up bella like what's next for you in 2021 and beyond like what would you say are your maybe top three goals um to the listeners oh okay um well i think i trying to figure out what I want to do after uni is <laughs> really important yeah. um, so I'm trying to think about whether I want to do a master's degree or trying to even just look for like potential jobs that I could do <laughs> um, definitely is something I need to figure out in the next couple of years um, before I graduate um, I really want to learn how to code over the holidays because Ooh. I think it's a really important skill and um, yeah. I, I, I work for my mom and it's an office job and there's just some really inefficient processes that could definitely be sped up if I learned how to code and did something. So I'm going to try and take some sort of um, either an online class or some sort of summer class to take so I can learn how to code. I mean, I think it's just an important skill to know how to use like computers better <laughs> in general. Um, that and I think just go out and meet some more uni friends as well once I'm allowed to because I have met a lot of people, but um, I would really like to get out and meet people well, meet more people because you know um starting uni i really thought that i was gonna go and have you know some big adventures but <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just stay home all the time yeah. it's been upsetting but i really want to take advantage of the fact that once i do get out once i am allowed to go out i really want to take advantage of the fact that i that i can go out and so meet a bunch of people and just have some fun <laughs> Yeah, we all need to have some fun sometimes. And I guess, Ella, you've got like three yeah. more years left of uni, I think. So still plenty of time to party. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God. Yeah, no, um, and yeah, Ella, it's been a, I guess, pleasure catching up and, you know, reminiscing about leadership um, and Mac is like I've learned a fair bit um, off you with like college captain, like, um, and obviously public speaking, the main one, um, I'm sure I'll take a few tips from this episode, but um, it was great to chat, um, learn more about like uni as well, like the double degree, like it's incredible, two different like, facets as well, and um, I'm sure the listeners um, have learned a fair bit, and um, we'll try the backflips, but maybe not to the degree <laughs> you do it, so maybe um, get catch a crash up sometime mat. soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome, thanks Ella. Thank you for having me.